bipedal traits are derived, and all of them are at the root of human orthopedic problems. The helpful aspects were the ability to actually walk. Persistence hunting is helped by bipedality. With the ability to look at eye level and freeing the arboreal creature from the trees, being bipedal meant that early hominids could hunt. Situational awareness on the savanna and early environment driven by the 2.5 Maya extinction pulse clearly drove human evolution past basal primitive traits and toward the more derived traits associated with the genus Homo. Primate vision was now given a higher vantage point that stereoscopic 180-degree ability to see was now lifted up. The hands, not used for knuckle walking, were idle and began to interact with the environment to make tools and eventually fire. The devil's plaything, the Promethean leap eventually made Homo erectus the first colonizer. Until then, Australopiths had been stuck in Africa, probably covered by hair, less able to run longer distances, less apt to carnivory. Prognathism fell off as something maladaptive, as more grassal features took over. The glutes became strong. Humans are capable of balance and athletic feats basically impossible for non-feelid animals. Combat came from this. Effective hunters are effective warriors, and until the gunpowder age, this gave military power to states and peoples with populations made up of these. Human brain power grew, but the skull would lost some of its robust thickness in comparison to earlier and primitive hominids. More need for coordination means a more developed nervous system with increased calorie needs and the expensive tissue that comes along with increase in brain size. Humans got faster, but they were easier to kill. On the flip side, human populations grew, and they all became better killers. Sexual dimorphism, while developed, was not as extreme in some other primates. The spine would suffer. An S-shaped spine enabled bipedality, but it also hurts. Slouching, leaning over, only able to interact with things on the ground by squatting. Safely, that is. Of course, lifting has to happen at the knees. This leads us to the next problem in human biomechanics, the valgus knee. It slips and slides and under pressure eventually degrades. The ankle suffers from similar problems, degrading tissues subject to instability and people pronate or have ambulatory issues. The foot arch is also subject to damage or collapse. The human feet having to carry the entire weight of the body are almost uniquely complicated and subject to damage when compared with quadrupeds and even our knuckle-walking biological compatriots. Eventually, the body breaks, and the normal method of bipedality becomes impossible without much assistance, making old age fraught for Homo sapiens. This hardly happens in other animals, even ones with extended more human-like lifespans, because walking on four legs is easier to maintain. Our bodies are smaller, limited in size in comparison to a gorilla or chimp. This is a loss of strength, at the gain of intellect, which birthed language and made larger, more complex social organizations possible. Bipedality ultimately meant more calories were needed. This need for calories explains the sweet tooth, desire for meat, and other dietary needs. Without large amounts of physical activity, it is easy for a domesticated human to become obese. Birth defects are another challenge caused by bipedality. The pelvis took on a thin bowl shape, and then it became difficult for children to exit the birth canal. This would impact human social organization, religion, and coupling practices in ways that cannot be surmised easily, but could easily be seen as negative from a normative egalitarian perspective. The neck and upper back also suffer. Alternating between standing and sitting is a fact of life for humans. Quadrupeds do not have to do as much to enter of leave states of rest. Perhaps bipedality could even be said to have made the use of fire an eventuality. A sleeping human has to spring to life to get out of danger, and this is a more involved process for them. Fire could banish the dark and help the bipedal human be in less danger from roving predators. Prolonged sitting can cause micro-tears along the upper back. However, the chimp never has to worry about suffering gamer neck, even if he did take an eternity attempting to type out Shakespeare through random mashing of keys.